Hmm, interesting. <laughs> uh, okay, you know what? Sean the wig doesn't fit. Yeah, you two are perfect for each, uh, for each other. She's short, you're short-tempered, she wears a wig, and you have trichoteria. <laughs> Joshua Faye Saunders was born on the 26th of March 1991 in Casper, Wyoming. Josh was born with underdeveloped lungs and was placed in an incubator to help him stay alive. His mother and father were both in their early 20s at the time that Josh came into the world, having got him married just a year before. His parents got divorced just a few years after he was born and his father had to fight a long custody battle to get custody of Josh, which he won. His father's name was Clinton Dean Saunders. Clint was promising at gymnastics and school but was injured so had to give this up and he was also a keen artist. His mum's name is Laura Goodrow. Not much is known about her but Josh has said that she has some kind of mental illness and she is a devout Christian. In 1996 Clint got remarried to Tanis K. Lovacek. She became Josh's stepmom. She and Clint had a kid and the family would move around, never settling too long in one place. Josh was an outcast at school, presumably due to his unique looks and odd behaviour. He was given a load of medication as a child, including Ritalin and antidepressant drugs in an effort to help him conform to the rules of school, but none of this worked. Josh attended a class for special needs kids which helped him learn, but unfortunately this caused him to be bullied more. This wasn't helped when one day at gym class, Josh fantasised about Lindsay Lohan and got an erection, at which point the other kids mocked him. The bullying around this time did ease off when Clint rode the school bus with Josh one day and talked to the other kids about Josh's disabilities. At 13, Josh began a paper route in order to save up and buy his first guitar and at the age of 14 he was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. He didn't do too well at school but loved Harry Potter books which he claims is the main way that he learned to read. Having lost the genetic lottery and having an unsettled home life, Josh was on the fast track to nowhere. Rejected by the world, Josh began to create his own world, a place where he could indulge his oddities and be the powerful man the real world would would mock. Josh's obsessions with cobras started with a video game called Buzzy the Knowledge Bug in which he saw a cobra hissing. He then saw a Steve Irwin video called Spitting Cobras of the World and the love was cemented when he visited a reptile gardens and saw the powerful creatures in the flesh. They were what Josh longed to be the small overlooked animal that packed a terrifyingly venomous bite when it revealed its true form. In 2005, Josh discovered the band Cradle of Filth, which in turn led him to finding Ozzy Osbourne. Josh fell in love with both of these bands, an obsession that would last to this day. In secondary school, which I think is high school for the American viewers, Josh and his friends would form a cult where they would smoke cigarettes and practice magic. Josh claims to have been the leader of this cult, which is where his name King Cobra first came from. This led to Josh forming his own religion in which the followers are called Cobra Demons. In this religion the main god is a male called Cobraton and his girlfriend is called Cobricious and their son is called Cobraro. There was also a war with the Cobra Demons who were all male and the Cobra Angels who were all female. The Demons won with the help of King Cobra. This sounds like a parody but it's true. I should at this point explain that Josh is a Satanist and follower of the occult, which is why in the biblical battle between angels and demons, the demons won. Josh created a symbol for this religion, which some say resembles a p***, but Josh denies this. At the age of 18, Josh got this symbol tattooed on his forearm. Mind, body, spirit and energy, belief, and they intertwined with each other and back into itself. Basically, that's the element for the power and all that. In 2009, the family moved back to Casper, Wyoming, and in 2010, Josh created his first YouTube channel named Gothic King Cobra 52. His first video was named Guitar Insight Intro. Hello, this is Gothic King Cobra 52, which will be doing a series on YouTube called Guitar Insight, where I play my electric guitar and incite my opinions on some random topics. And 
As a precaution, if you're easily offended by coarse language or intellectual smart-ass cheeky comments, I wouldn't recommend you watch it. If you're offended by a dark sense of humour, I wouldn't recommend you watch it. His early videos were mainly him doing vocal covers of his favourite bands, playing guitar and talking about gothic stuff. Josh at this stage was a young man full of dreams, wide-eyed, hopped up on energy drinks, open and seemed to enjoy talking to the viewers of his videos. An edgy goth kid who hated to conform to the roles that society had laid out for him, so he turned to the gothic subculture and conformed to the rules that they laid out for him. Some things never change. Oh, I should probably point out that his favourite colours are green and black. Yes, I'm aware that black isn't a colour, you smart ass. If you keep your eyes open, you'll notice these colours throughout the whole video. 2011 was a big year for Josh. In 2011, he had a fist fight with his father at Christmas. In 2011, Josh unveiled his plans to become a famous musician so that he could build his dream house, which he had already drawn up plans for. Also in 2011, Josh had his first hit video called F*** The Mainstream. This was when people first started to pay attention to Josh's channel. He also showed off his plans for his dream house again. It's a pretty common theme. He really wants that house. This is what the front's gonna look like. Basically, my symbol on top, you know, clock tower, bell tower, makes my room, you know, just, yeah. Floor plans on the back, you know. I might just have more than one bill. Right now I have one bill planned for it, but I actually want maybe four bills. I don't know. But being a famous musician would definitely give them the money to build that dream house of mine. Also in 2011, Josh was banned from YouTube for two weeks when he exposed his on a video in an effort to get back at his growing number of trolls. He then set up a new channel named Peach Monster 666 on which he would post videos of him dressed up in a Halloween costume and claiming to be the king of the trolls. He did this as a way to infiltrate the troll community as a whole and I guess bring it down from the inside. This didn't work. Greetings YouTube, Peach Monster 666 is back from beyond the grave. Here to troll you, Gothic Ingover. Yes, <laughs> your videos are so pathetic. 2011 was sadly the year that the Gothic King Cobra 52 YouTube channel was terminated. The channel was seemingly deleted because Josh had to go to some kind of boot camp for finding a job called Job Corp. Honestly, it's a little hard for me to tell the reason why this channel was deleted, but the timing coincides, so I guess this is the reason. Job Corp was set to last a year and he didn't have the internet at this new place, so it seems like a good reason to delete a channel. Whatever the reason, this was the end of an era, but the beginning of a new lease of life for Josh. But before we continue with the story, let's get to know Josh a little better. Music is a divine arrangement of notes that brings melodic order out of the infinite chaos of possibilities, compelling us to move our bodies in a shamanic trance in time with the order that humans have tamed out of the wilderness, making us akin to a god in the real world, teasing exquisite beauty out of the darkness, bending the fabric of reality to our will, making us the masters of the universe. This is Cobra's music. <laughs> Honestly, I like weird experimental music, so I don't hate it. But I can see why it's not most people's cup of animal semen. I mean, I don't listen to it. I just don't hate it. In his younger days, Josh had hoped to be a rich and famous musician. Spoiler alert, this didn't happen. Music is a bit of a mixed bag for Josh. Sometimes he writes songs for shock value, and sometimes he channels true feelings into his songs, like this song about his mother. I Josh is a wizard, 
or a warlock maybe, I'm not sure what the difference is to be honest. He is heavily into the occult and truly believes that he has magical powers. King Cobra's magic can manifest in many different ways. Sometimes he creates chi balls in his hands and sometimes he changes traffic lights. Yeah. How about some walk sign? Come on. What you got? Walk sign. Green light and walk sign. Patience and persistence. The two P's of magic, YouTube. Walk sign, mother Let's see it. There we go. Some of his more notable uses of magic include the time that he took down ISIS, stopped c and used a spell to make someone he didn't like crash his car. Nice. He is also an exorcist and can talk to ghosts sometimes. He makes magic wands and sells them on Etsy, mostly to his fans, but this seems to be a long lasting source of income for Josh and he seems to enjoy it. So good luck with this endeavor, I guess. He is also a ventriloquist. When he was young, his father brought him a Charlie McCarthy puppet, which he named Sean. His skill with this puppet seems to vary a lot. Sometimes the puppet has the exact same voice as Josh and his mouth just moves like normal, which makes it hard to keep track of who's saying what. And sometimes the puppet has a slightly higher pitched voice and Josh just moves his mouth like normal. The puppet seems to be an outlet for Josh to say things that maybe he's uncomfortable saying himself. Sean is often rude and tells crude jokes. Hey, you guys. Okay, Sean, what? If you're not Italian, please don't do that. What? That's cultural appropriation. Oh, f you. That only works if you're not white. King Cobra is pretty well known for his unorthodox cooking. He even used to have a dedicated cooking channel called Cooking with Cobra, but sadly this was deleted. Josh seems heavily inspired by channels such as Epic Mealtime, Matt Stoney and Bad Lands Chugs. Unnecessary bacon use and grease are the standout ingredients for his unhealthy concoctions, but his real trademark is the use of Mountain Dew and energy drinks, plus the odd combinations he cooks up. What's up, YouTube? We are doing some hard boiled eggs. Now, yes, I did use Mountain Dew. I would just dump these in here, but I don't want the grease to splatter, so. Your next step is just. It's just drop them in there like that. Yeah, f it. God damn it. Stop. Hell yeah. Here's the pizza. Got sushi. They got pig's feet, Doritos. You can see the wasabi. The ginger leaves. Josh cooks things in the oven using the temperature 420 a lot and makes a point of telling his viewers this. He is also known for his drinks combinations with classics such as Cobra's Mist, which is beer and energy drink, or Cobra's Blood, which is red wine and energy drink. Gentle. Let that carbonation die down. We're going to want that carbonation to die down just a little bit and pour, make it full and drink a little bit of it here. <laughs> now with the carbonation from the soda pop and the champagne, it's probably going to curdle with these last four, but that's what YouTube wants to see. Oh, that's so gross. Wants to see, right? Ah, uh, jeez. So I'll pour a splash of that in there. Oh, dude, this drink combo is looking so f***ing gnarly, dude. <sighs> yeah, man, I got this uh, hot jerky stick right here. It's a classic hunter's sausage. Well, that's a good jerky stick, sausage, whatever.
there it is, sitting right there, just below the surface there. Get an angle on this, just right. An important part of the King Cobra JFS story is the oddball collection of friends that he has had over the years. They play an important role in the King Cobra story which I thought might get a little confusing if we don't meet some of the players in the game. Many people have come and gone over the years so I won't cover them all but let's meet some of the more interesting ones. I like beer because it is good. Mm -hmm. I drink beer because I should. If there was a song to sing, I'd sing it and beer you bring. They say beer would make me dumb. It are go good with pizza. <laughs> yeah. Darth Lenny is reminiscent of a dwarf from the Nordic myths of old. He is a short, stout man who smelts metal, makes chain mail, and loves riddles. One of his highlights was the time that he single handedly saved the Wyoming police force by giving them some cookies. What the f is up, YouTube? It's your boy Darth Lenny here back at you with another video. Today. Well, let's just say I bought a, some Girl Scout cookies and had a couple left over. So, here is where we are. So, we are given these extra 158 boxes to Casper PD. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. Thank you very much. 148 of those. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys for your service. Thank you. Darth Lenny is the most wholesome person in the Cobraverse and genuinely seems like a good guy. He is probably Josh's only true friend and seems to have Josh's best interests at heart. Some other little tidbits about Darth Lenny are that he claims he will not have sex unless it is to make a baby and he feels indebted to Josh as Cobra once stopped him from taking his own life. Warlord's real name is Alex Campbell and he is for me at least one of the more annoying people in Cobra's life. He is a bisexual p star, I use the term star loosely. Warlord seems to use Josh for free stuff and doesn't come across to me at least as a very good friend and he talks a lot. One of his highlights was when him and Cobra had a drunken fight. My favourite Warlord storyline has to be when he became Josh's wand making apprentice for a week. Cobra became a little bit of a tyrant when he was given his power over Warlord, like he would make him call him master, he would make Warlord follow him around carrying a big bag of sticks, and when poor Alex was given the opportunity to finally make a wand of his very own, Josh just snapped it in front of him saying that it was too weak. Cobra then pretended to try and snap his own magic wand, but couldn't because Josh makes them too strong. I made Warlord Campbell my apprentice on wand making, and he's learning the finer arts of it, yeah. Based off of this, they're a master. Those are definitely very smooth, but there's a quality check. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can put all of my strength into it. Oh, it shines. Hanging out with homeboy Scotty. Here's the thing, though. Subway does... Dude, I, I'm going to have to address this. I've tried, Tina. Please stop. Please stop. I have tried to see you. I have tried. You're making me out to look like the bad guy. Like, always. That's cool. I'm f***ing sick of it. Please stop. Hey, Tina, if you and Scott... Don't drag you and Scott's bullshit <laughs> onto my Facebook, please. And thank you. Okay, Tina. You can say I haven't been, but I have messages on my phone saying otherwise. But oh, my right. God. Tina, if you come and say hi to me, that's cool, but I'm not going to have you fighting with Scott on my f***ing Facebook. I'm just not doing this, all right? I'm trying to do a f***ing food review for YouTube. I'm sorry, Tina, but damn it. You don't. I told you to ignore it, Scott. And people have to bring drama onto my Facebook. I'm tired of it. Stop, Tina. Just f***ing stop, please. You and Scott can talk about this on your own f***ing time. Please stop f***ing bringing drama into my f***ing Facebook. I'm tired of it. Hey, Scott, I have your daughter. You want to see her? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's time to be responsible. Oh, my God, Tina, stop. Can you please stop? 
I know you do, and believe me, if Scotty could get a job, he would, but he's legally blind, so nobody will fucking hire him. Oh my fucking god. Single life! I love single life Facebook! Homeboy Scotty's real name is William Hackman and he is the best known of Cobra's friends having played an important part in some of the storylines we will look at later. Scotty first appeared in the Cobraverse in 2015 making claims that a planet had been found covered in space cannabis. Scotty was once arrested and convicted of f***ing a man with a sword in Josh's apartment. Scotty accused the man of stealing one of Cobra's tobacco pipes and things escalated with Scotty first f***ing the arms of Cobra's armchair then cutting his own arms, then cutting the victim's arms. Not a big fan of arms is our boy Scotty. He apparently cut his own arms in an attempt to claim self-defence, but this didn't work. I'm not too sure what sentence he got for this, but he did say he was on probation in 2016 while doing a freestyle rap with Cobra. Yeah, I'm on probation. I did slap somebody, but I didn't even mean to, but it f***ing happened. So funny. Don't listen, because my mind's all blitzing. I don't understand, because it's all f***ed up and missing. Like I just did, don't give a sh what you say. You might say I'm f***ing weird and stupid, okay, but I don't give a f***. Like, I really care. You're not even there. Who really cares? Because all your words are is just that. So shut the f*** up and grab a seat and sit down and relax. Look at these thugs on YouTube saying my homeboy Scotty's doing drugs. Motherfucker, he's on probation trying to stay clean so we can pass his piss test and not make a scene. Get off early and maybe hit their... I don't even know. I lost track of it. Scotty is best known in the Cobraverse for saying that he was going to set Josh up with a musical goth chick with Asperger's. Josh was very excited by this, but every time they scheduled a time to meet, her dog would get run over or some kind of weird thing would happen, meaning that they couldn't meet. This happened with three different musical goth chicks with Asperger's that Scotty had set Josh up with. Casper obviously has a lot of them. This led to Cobra's fans accusing Scotty of being a liar. The pair drifted apart and Scotty wasn't really seen in the Cobraverse much with his last real appearance being in 2020 with this phone call. You shouldn't have to deal with that, Scott, but dude, ending it's not gonna solve anything, man. Being alive isn't gonna solve anything either. My voice isn't enough. I'm All we can do is try, Scott. Does it work? So try harder. You try harder. You keep trying till you make it happen. So you keep trying until you make it happen. You just don't quit, man. Thanks for being my friend, Scott. Later's. Yeah. I'll get a close up on the uh on the pizza there. Yeah. <laughs> Some stuffed crust right there, you see the cheese? Oh yeah. It's a rocking good time. Real name Steve Taylor, he is one of the more odd friends in the Cobraverse. There are many rumours about Steve that I won't go into as I couldn't really find any proof for these. But the things that we do know are he is a furry, his wife always looks like she's being held hostage. And Steve gave homeboy Scotty a computer once, but forgot to wipe the hard drive. <laughs> when they looked on the computer, they found a video of Steve having <laughs> with an inflatable goat. What a little treat for them. To me personally, Steve comes off as a creepy guy that I wouldn't let babysit my kids. And also a bit of a simpleton who's not quite right in the head. I had to get out of the apartment. I believe it. You know how it is. Yeah. If you don't want to look at the walls, so we're wrong. Mm-hmm. You start talking to you. Mountain Dew and Bud Light Platinum. And you start answering him. Down the hill, Dave is a bit player, really, who I'm only including as he has an interesting past. When he was younger, he was arrested for shooting someone. He shot someone at a campsite while wearing a welder's hat and had a stuffed squirrel around his neck. I'm unsure of the sentence he got for this, but the guy didn't die and he's out on the streets now. He's the one gonna help me make the videos or certain videos. Check out his channel, Warlord Seven Seven One. He's got a couple cool videos. Shut up. He's a little drunk. 
Cobra has let a few people stay at his apartment over the years, most notably homegirl Amy who Josh kicked out when his landlord fined him $500 because Amy had a cat, plus Cobra called her a freeloader. Then we have Couch Chris who outstayed his welcome. Chris would sit on the couch playing games, not helping Josh with any housework and correct everything that Josh said. I eat my vegetable and the peanut butter itself has lots of protein in it, so... That was a pretty good meal and a lot healthier than, yeah, because tomato, the banana pepper, the hamburgers, just raw meat, you know, bread's got the wheat, the yogurt's got a little bit of protein in it, and the bread's, you know, vegetable. So this had a little bit of everything in it, minus um, the fish, which should be in the dairy, actually. So yeah, so this, this pretty much... Can, the fish the, goes in protein. It's meat. Chris, do you have to correct me every video I make. Why the f would you think that fish is a dairy product? Does it come out of a cow? It contains protein like milk. Milk's a dairy product. Milk, cheese, all that is dairy. Peanuts go into uh, proteins which are meat. Maybe it was a slip of the tongue. It happens. Okay, stop correcting me every f***ing video. I'm getting sick and tired of it. <sighs> Josh and his fans chased Chris away with some brutal home truths. You're not helping him by letting him mooch and lay around playing Xbox, opening tuna with your scissors and keep busting your ass at Wendy's to keep a roof and internet over man baby's head. Thought you were a man up, Saunders. So a man up, you know, helping someone when they need it. And Circumstances, yeah, I know they suck, but why the f is that giant f wearing camis? Josh, stop listening to Chris and get him the f out of the apartment, like right now. Almost didn't know Chris because the camouflage was making him blend in with the couch. Chris should be put down. Chris has terminal, a terminal case of dumb. F Titus, symptoms include being a lazy piece of shit, mooching off your friends while not contributing anything, avoiding work like the plague. That oh, yeah. fat bastard really needs to go. He's abusing your kindness, Josh. One final little piece of information I'll include in this section is where the nickname Boglim came from. I just assumed it came from the Boglin puppets that were popular in the 90s, but apparently not. This comes from a chap by the name of Cool Taste, who is kind of Josh's friend, but kind of his enemy. It's confusing what's going on there. Anyway, Cool Taste called Josh a goblin, but misspelt the word as Boglim. And the name just kind of stuck with Josh calling himself a boglim sometimes. Pull up my magic wand here, YouTube. And there's a light right there. It looks dark now, but you're gonna see it turn on. I got my wand trained on that son of a bitch. You wanna see some real magic? Watch this. So, back to our story. Josh was shipped off to Job Corp where he f the grapefruit, lost his virginity in the bathrooms to an actual woman, and got kicked out for smoking weed. The lady he had sex with in the bathroom was to become the love of his life, but we'll skip past this for the time being. In 2012, Josh set up the King Cobra JFS channel, but it wasn't until 2014 that Josh's YouTube career really kicked off when he starred in a documentary called Gothic King Cobra. This was a fly on the wall look into Josh's life made by a channel called Trapped. On a side note, this is a pretty good documentary I'd recommend watching. The channel Trapped only posted two documentaries, both of which are pretty good actually. Anyway, around this time, Josh would have a string of fast food restaurant jobs, including Burger King, Taco Bell and Wendy's. It was the job at Wendy's that really changed Josh's life. This gave him enough money to move out of his dad's house and get an apartment of his very own. A young man full of life and dreams of what the future may bring. The era when he lived in this apartment was the peak for King Cobra fans. A look into the life of an unusual young man whose trials and tribulations were streamed for the world to see. The ups, the downs, the good, the bad, the weird, the wonderful 
and to top it all off, he was a likeable goth wizard with autism. What more could you ask for? I'm so good at guitar, it's a wonder I'm not swimming in pussy right now. I'm just saying. Just for that $2 donation, I guess. Yeah. One of the more famous moments from this era was when Josh decided to dye his hair while he was doing a live stream. Unfortunately, Cobra had forgotten that he was meant to be working at Wendy's at the time. His manager called to remind him, but going to work was going to be a bit of a problem. It's best that you just watch to see why this was going to be a problem, I guess. Now, you should use over a kitchen sink or a towel because it's very messy, but I'll take my chances. So a lot cheaper, a lot better for your hair than doing it in a salon. I can guarantee you that. A lot cheaper until I don't have to get in the shower and get completely naked. I can just rinse my hair out underneath the shower head. So, oh yeah, I got it all over my head. Yeah, it's a chick product, but you know what? I don't care. Yeah, the back of my neck is soaked in the shit. Oh, that's lovely. That's just freaking lovely. Yeah, I'm just making an ass of myself now. For you, YouTube entertainment, no less. God damn it. This is why you want to put a towel on before you do this shit, people. That's the back of my hair. And you can take time to do your eyebrows, too, if you want. my mustache too. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Why so serious? <laughs> oh look, the blue skin clashes so horribly with my tainted teeth. Oh, how f***ing lovely. How f***ing lovely. Cause there wasn't much of a mustache there to begin with, but yeah. Oh well, at least gives you a good laugh and helps you appreciate life a little bit more. Like I said, it could be worse. Ho oh, ho, I'm Josh, the French Avatar. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, sacré <laughs> I'm Pierre the Avatar. <laughs> really annoying orange, really, Josh? Really? <laughs> hey, Apple, hey, Apple, what? Knife. <laughs> I look so fing stupid right now. <laughs> oh my fing god. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, I look horrible. This event didn't lead to Cobra being fired, but he did get reduced hours at Wendy's. Around this time, Josh would hang out with his friends, drink, party, play music, make wands, cast spells, pine after his dream house with a clock tower and promote tactical soap. Yep, that's a thing. I'm unclear if they sponsor Cobra, but this would be an odd business decision for a soap company as Josh is not best known for his hygiene. He does have affiliate links, which I'm guessing is where he gets his money from, but he talks about it a lot. Josh seems to love the stuff and rubs it all over his clothes before he leaves the house. I'm pretty sure soap is for your skin and not your clothes, but what do I know? Get yourself some tactical soap and you too can smell as sexy as I do. This to me seems like a time period where Cobra had far more real fans than trolls and he was pretty self-aware of his shortcomings, never taking them too seriously. Here we go. There we go. Now I get to watch their autistic card open up a can of red salmon. This will be hilarious. Over the years, Josh turned into a full-time YouTuber and wand maker, not working but making a living from his online endeavours. His channel was monetized and things were going well for Josh. But as with everyone, the peak can't last forever and soon things would begin to unravel for Josh. But before we look at his third era, let's take a closer look at his love life. 
Josh and Stephanie first met each other at Job Corp where Josh lost his virginity to her in the bathroom. After Josh was kicked out of Job Corp, Stephanie moved in with him and the pair seemed to be good for each other. Probably the happiest he has ever been when he was with her and she seemed to really like Josh. Cobra's fans did accuse him of not treating her right, but Josh showed these stupid fools with this video. So a lot of y'all are like, Oh, you, Stephanie can so much better than him. Yeah. Well, guess what? I just made Stephanie a hot pocket and got her some Dr. Pepper. It's like a little... Talking good hell. <laughs> talking. <laughs> How's that like it's witty? It's for meat and cheese. <laughs> That's good. How romantic. Sadly, this relationship came to an end when Josh cheated on Stephanie and then Stephanie cheated on Josh. But what were the circumstances around this, I hear you ask? Well, good question. So Josh and his friend Couch Chris were paid by a pregnant woman with a pack of cigarettes to have a threesome in the back of Chris's van. I really can't begin to comprehend the kind of horny desperation that woman must have been going through to pay these two for that service. In an act of revenge, Stephanie took it up the arse by her ex-boyfriend and that was that. The pair were no more. Josh laments the loss of Stephanie from time to time and it would appear that she was the love of his life, the one that got away. Summer was a short-lived relationship. She was a furry, but not just any furry, she was something called a skeleton furry. These crazy kids. Those of you with a good memory may remember that she's not the only furry in this story. Scrapper Steve liked the look of her skeleton costume apparently and tried to make a move on Summer. Homeboy Scotty found out about this and told Josh. You know, tried to lie to me. Fuck All right, Steve since, since, to, yeah, Steve hold, tried to hold, lie hold, to hold, me. Hold, hold on, let me say it. Let me say it. All right, what happened was, you know, Josh just found a girly, right? Yeah. And that's awesome. It's fucking <laughs> badass. I'm happy for Josh, and she's a good woman, and he deserves her. All right, he, he, this, he doesn't deserve the bullshit. <laughs> what's coming from? All right, you want to know the bullshit? <laughs> Y'all want to know the bullshit? <laughs> the bullshit <laughs> is, Josh. All right, being a good friend. Never been a bad friend, never once. Anytime I needed him, or anytime any of his friends needed him, he was there, all right? He was always there, okay? With that being said, with that being said, Steve, Mr. Goat, whatever you want to call him, Goat fucker, whatever, all right? This is what happened. Try to get me, like, try to Josh this girl, dude. Straight up, Steve was trying to get with my girlfriend. A Cobraverse civil war broke out between Josh and Steve, which ended with Josh threatening to release the video of Steve doing unspeakable things to a blow-up goat. I will do a peace treaty with King Cobra under one condition. That supposed video of me that Scotty has needs to be deleted off that computer that I sold Scott a long time ago. And if that can happen... I believe maybe I will do a peace treaty. The Summer and Josh love affair ended when she broke it off because she didn't like a present that he had bought her. This part of the story starts with Josh complaining to his fans that he was on a dry spell and really wanted to know the pleasures of a woman again. Generously, they sent him a fleshlight, which Cobra refers to as a pocket pussy. Josh then proceeded to defile the fleshlight. Not on live stream, thank God. After he had had his wicked way with the counterfeit genitalia, post-nut clarity set in and he posted this video. Like, someone made a comment on one of my YouTube videos. They're like, somebody send this guy a pocket pussy and I deleted the comment because I'm like, no, don't send me a pocket pussy, god damn it, I find sex to be disgusting. Like, what the f***? This is what I think of your stupid pocket pussy right here. This is what I think about love and companionship. This is me, like, saying I give up on love and companionship, man. It's never gonna f***ing happen, so why f waste my time craving it? Josh would talk more and more about getting a sex doll, so his fans sent him a few blow-up dolls, but these didn't cut the mustard for Josh, so he set up a GoFundMe for a $1,000 doll, which sadly got taken down, 
but his fans being the nice guys that they are actually got him a $1,000 silicone doll. Josh f***ed it to death and skinned it alive by cutting its face off. What I did was eerie, yeah, but let's, let's face it, people, let's face it. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, I know. I know. Just know that if I ever get the chance to pay back the people for this, I know it's not the point. Okay, I know this. It's going to happen. I mean, they all want free ones. I'm down. I just know that this is my attempt at an apology video. The skit with the doll would have been funnier than it. And that's my loss, really, for missing out on that opportunity to produce comedy gold. The fans were understandably upset by this and Josh's dry spell continued until eventually one of his fans sent him a new doll. But, as is so often the case with the gifts that Josh gets from his fans, there was something a little off with this doll. What up YouTube? So this here is uh, King Cobra JFS with another unboxing video. And um... I had a fan of mine send me something. Yeah. Yeah, one of my fans sent me a uh, freaking <laughs> stall. <laughs> um, he forgot to put the wig in the box, so I'm using this one until I get the other wig. Um. Yeah, this isn't one of the full-sized ones. This is a uh, fun-sized one, but that's quite all right. Fun-sized Felicia, as the doll became known, was a big hit with Josh and the pair fell madly in love. But this modern-day retelling of Romeo and Juliet was to have a tragic end when Josh melted her skin off. This was seemingly not a brutal moment of post-nut clarity, but he just washed her with the wrong type of soap. On a lighter note, Josh soon bounced back from his heartbreak and since 2017 has been saving up to buy a $2,000 doll. As far as I know, he still has not brought this doll. Josh has gained a fair amount of attention over the years. Some of it good, some of it not so good. On the whole, I would say that half of his fan base are real fans that like him and the other half are trolls. The trolling varies from light-hearted stuff to mildly annoying to a few rare cases of real malicious intent. Over the years, Cobra has dealt with this a number of different ways. In the early days, he would pretend that this didn't bother him and sometimes flash his ass at the trolls on livestream, but thankfully this is a habit that he has grown out of. In his peak years, he would ignore them or pretend that he wasn't bothered by them with the occasional outburst, and in the present day, he seems to be lost in his hatred for the trolls. One of the worst moments in the regard of trolling was when Josh was swatted on livestream. This really shook him up, which is fair enough. I'll quickly now go over some of the more well-known acts of trolling in the Cobraverse. First up, we have the time that trolls sent Josh a t-shirt with his friend Warlord on it. If you remember, Warlord was a star. I use the term star loosely. I'm sure that you can guess the rest. It's a white shirt, check this out. Hmm. Oh, cool. What the f is this nasty shit? What the f is Oh, dude, that's disgusting. No, dude, no. I'm throwing this shirt away. That's fing nasty. Another notable moment of trolling was when someone pretended to be Josh. Copying his name and video style, they even put up a green screen to mimic his house. Cobra fans pretended to be confused about who the real Cobra was, so Josh began to post videos denigrating the authenticity of this new Cobra. The new King Cobra, 
Cobra spelt with a K, would pretend to be everything that Josh was and the two even did a debate to prove who the real King Cobra was. The pair played guitar, did puppet jokes and compared magic wands to prove who the real King Cobra was. Things came to a head when K Cobra posted a video in which he cast a spell on Josh using black magic, something that is no joking matter for Josh. This kind of just fizzled out and life continued for Josh. Then we have the fan favourite R.I.P. Scotty. This refers to the time that Cobra made a video about Scotty Moore dying. He was the guitarist for Elvis Presley. He played some guitar as a tribute, but the trolls began to pretend that homeboy Scotty had died. Josh didn't understand that this was a joke. My homeboy Scotty did not die. No. Okay. I posted a video entitled Rest in Peace Scotty Moore, guitarist for Elvis. Basically, that should tell you that the guitarist for Elvis Presley has just passed away. And I thought it'd be fitting to play some gnarly ass shreds in his memory because people like him helped establish music today. Um, we wouldn't have the metal bands that we have today if it would not have been for Elvis and his amazing guitarist. Now, one person commented, Oh, sorry to hear about your homeboy, or something like that. One person commented, in fact, let me just, yeah, scroll down here for a second. One person commented, Rip homeboy Scotty. To which I replied, He did not die. One person said this, okay. One person said this, and I responded with, he did not die, he's still alive. So then that must mean that 10 to 20 other motherfuckers gotta jump in and say the exact same goddamn thing. To the point where I'm just repeating myself. So, let me reassure you with this video. My homeboy Scotty did not die. He is alive and well. One of the more weird moments of trolling was the Chaz Raz saga. Honestly, I find the intentions and purpose behind this pretty confusing, but it started in 2020 when Chaz Raz and his wife Daisy would donate Josh money on his live streams being very complimentary. This went on for some time until Chaz started to talk about getting Josh a job doing voice work for an animation company in Hollywood that he worked for. This immediately alerted the Cobra fans that something was off. But Josh believed him. This wasn't helped by the fact that Chaz spoke to Josh's dad, homeboy Clint, on the phone and Clint was sucked in. Chaz would make all kinds of promises to Josh about signing contracts and Josh truly believed that he was going to Hollywood to be a famous voice actor. One of the more interesting things about this part of the story is how Cobra acted when he thought he was going to be rich and famous. He started to be a bit arrogant, dismissive of his long-term fans and act superior to everyone. This wasn't too over the top, but you could tell for sure that he thought he was above everyone now that he was set for big things. Some of his fans would try to warn him about Chaz, but honestly Chaz was pretty convincing at the start and a lot of Josh's fans also believed that he was for real. Chaz then began to post weird, slightly deranged messages to Reddit aimed at Josh's fans. In these messages, he would claim to be very rich and willing to use his money to go after the trolls slash fans while throwing odd insults at them. The trolls slash fans were unfazed by this and began to dig up dirt on Chaz. So who was Chaz? Well, he was a small-time podcaster with a few hundred subs, a guest on a talk show which apparently exploited people with mental illness, a self-proclaimed comedian. He did help to make a cartoon on a small YouTube channel. He was a well-known troll named Beef Rave with a long history of trolling dating back to 2011 and was so well-known that he had his own page on Encyclopedia Dramatica. His wife was also a star. But not just any porn star, the pair were performing cuck porn. In a weird twist of fate, Chaz had worked with one of King Cobra's main trolls named Jack, but the pair had a falling out in the past. Jack released this phone call between the two. You're not right, you fat f***ing piece of sh**. Yes, I am right, dude. Everything you've ever talked about is a lie. Yeah. Your shows are a lie. Yeah. Your TV show's a lie. Your movie's a lie, dude. You're just beef you. rave. You're just beef rave, some fake internet troll, dude. You. No, everything you've ever done is a lie. 
You How are such you? a How liar, dude. Dare you? Everything Fuck you've you, ever done is a lie. You you've never no had a cool car. You've never had a radio job. Profile. You've never you. had a TV show. Yeah, what a bitch. Anyways, check it out, Beef Rave. Just read the Encyclopedia Dramatic article on this guy, dude. Dude, it's fake. You for that. What have you ever done? You, you son of a what, bitch what for trying you... to troll me and no, talk to what, me like that. What you have Donald you ever Trump done? Dick. What have you ever done, dude? You can't you can't even talk. You're afraid to talk to me. Chaz then tried to take control of the King Cobra JFS channel by manipulating Josh. First, Josh revoked the moderator privileges for his most dedicated fans as Chaz drove a wedge between them. Then Cobra stopped uploading to YouTube as Chaz told him that this could interfere with the voice acting job. Josh also privated all of his videos in a bid to purge the channel from trolls. A bit of a civil war broke out between Chaz and Josh's fans slash trolls. It's a bit of a grey area what they are. Chaz Raz really started to unravel and act weirder and weirder. Like he claimed to drive to Casper and talk to Josh's trolls parents, talk to the media and police about Josh's trolls and he was going to spend the vast amounts of money that he has to take the trolls to court. He also claimed that he had legally brought all of Josh's content and was now the legal power of attorney for Josh. This was all told to Cobra's fans slash trolls on live calls and honestly Chaz comes off as a bit mental, acting smug and smart about things that he was clearly wrong about. Like one time he was talking to one of Cobra's fans slash trolls who was clearly from New Zealand, but Chaz claimed to have all of his information and was going to contact the police in Britain to arrest him. Chaz Raz then suddenly began to backtrack claiming that a private investigator that he had hired uncovered things about Josh's past that would put his voice acting job at risk. Chaz then began to try and make friends with Cobra's fans and distance himself from Josh. Chaz Raz never dropped the act once. The whole time he was backtracking and claimed that Josh had lied to him and he was the victim of the situation. The whole thing was just very odd and seems to me like Chaz was a man lost in his own lies and kind of believes the lies that he was telling maybe. Or was he telling the truth the whole time? Or just a troll that didn't work out as planned? I have no idea really. Josh finally became wise to the situation. See if you can spot the moment that Josh's mind on Chaz Raz was changed. But what I have noticed is there's a lot of people in your community right now who aren't fans of him, who don't think he's, you know, honest and forthright. I honestly don't know why they hate him. They're accusing him of being this motherfucker named Aaron, and I'm like, I don't know if that's true or not, you know? Thinks because he's a comedian, he's dating a plant star that he's all that. But I'm like, dude. Do you know what kind of plant his woman does? Gang bang. Quack, quack, quack. No do you, idea. Do you know that they do cuck plant? No fucking way. That's just weird, dude. Dude, you, there is literally a video of Chaz watching his woman being railed by another dude. What the f uh, uh, sorry to sorry to go kind of weird with that, but that's such a funny fact about Chaz. I, I thought you should know. <laughs> like he himself isn't the breadwinner; it's Daisy, and they think that yeah, there you go. Think about that for a second. He doesn't have money; he uses his woman's money. Oh, motherfucker, dude! See, that's that's why he that's why he'll do things like send you rogue pictures and shit. Because his woman will take him to Las Vegas and let him stunt. Uh, his woman is the one paying the bills, getting railed by other dudes. Uh, he, he doesn't... Wow, dude. For more details on this, I'd recommend a channel called Bite Size Cobra Vids, who has a two-hour documentary on the Chaz Raz saga. Then we have the Mr. Green incident. Mr. Green was a troll who met up with Josh pretending to be a fan and went back to Josh's apartment. While there, Mr. Green would make in-jokes to other trolls without Josh noticing. Honestly, Mr. Green didn't seem like a bad guy, but make your own minds up on if you think it's morally correct to go to someone's house and mock them. The most interesting part of the Mr. Green incident for me was just how jarring it was to see a normal person in Cobra's house. Josh is such an unusual person that his friends seem kind of normal compared to him, but when you plop an actual normal person in the Cobraverse, it makes you realise just how odd everyone is. 
Another interesting part of the story when it comes to the trolling is the time that they sent him a fake lottery ticket. Josh talks about winning the lottery a lot and pretty much pins all of his hopes of building his dream house with a clock tower on winning the lottery. So the troll sent him a fake scratch card which was a $50,000 winner but Josh just scratched it off and didn't even notice that he had won and threw it away. Not all of the attention that Josh gets is bad, with many of his fans sending him gifts ranging from money to a lathe to help him make wands. It also came with the notes. Let me just read it for you. <clears throat> hi, Cobes. After I watched... Ooh, I messed up. Let's try that again. It says, hi, Cobes. After I vacationed, I went to Cuba for vacation with my of-age woman. I don't know if you know this, but their cigars are famous. For them... You should show the trolls because they were quite expensive and those pieces of shit will be jealous. Thanks for being you, Donovan. Donovan, my dude, thank you. My trolls are the biggest pieces of shit. You have no idea. I'm not going to discuss it because I'm not going to give those assholes any more attention. So this is the Commodore from, uh, from Cuba. There's the official seal. Republic of Cuba. Let's break that f***ing seal and tr open it. Yeah, f*** my asshole trolls. He does get the odd prank gift as well. King Cobra is also the king of the crossovers. If you've seen any of my videos, you should recognize some of these faces. 66 King Cobra for disabling his chats and being a pansy to kids. Disabling his chat. Order 66 King Cobra. JFS, you piece of crap. Order 66, your candy ass piece of boy. King Cobra JFS. Hmm. Could be a predator's name, but I think in this case it's a successful musician. King Cobra, JFS. You know who I am? I know who you are, and we need some behavior corrections. Man, King Cobra goes down, bro. That's a long rabbit hole you can go uh, down I, here. This I is my boy. This He's the gothic sexy bad do boy. <laughs> he does. Yeah, yeah. I don't right. want to be in this. Yeah. <laughs> I see why Marty f with Cyrax. That sh it's fucking hilarious. Cyrax, dude. And then her going after Cobra all the time. Oh my god. And I don't know what right. the hell Cobra. I honestly don't know what the hell Cobra's deal is with me. I don't know. I don't even. I don't even know the guy, so I don't know what the hell he has against me. But this is simply just my final plea from one law cow to another to King Cobra JFS. Josh. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everyone that follows you is a troll, but the simple truth is this, man. Most people are. Greetings there, Josh. This is Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth. You're the subject of a cameo video request. Please don't let the lizard die. You hear that, Josh? Please don't let the lizard die. STAY FILTHY! But not at the expense of said lizard. So, back to our story. Josh began to turn from a goth to a gothic cowboy. He even brought himself a cowboy style cap gun. King Cobra was riding high, but sadly this would change when his YouTube channel was demonetized. I've been unable to work out the full details around this, but it looks like it was demonetized due to hate speech. So he began to use a platform called Streamlabs, which relies on fan donations. The money began to roll in with trolls donating a lot of cash to basically verbally abuse Cobra but Josh was laughing all the way to the bank, until the trolls charged back all of their donations, leaving Josh with a load of Streamlab debt as he had already spent the money. He 
he stopped using Streamlabs. In 2020, Josh got a call from his dad while doing a live stream to inform him that he was being evicted from his apartment due to years of smoking indoors and destroying the place to the cost of $6,000 worth of damage. Josh was very sad about this as this apartment was his freedom and with no YouTube money coming in, the timing couldn't be worse. Luckily, his father sorted out a new apartment for Josh but unluckily his new address was leaked which would cause him problems later down the line. Josh around this stage of his life was really starting to drink a lot, appearing drunk most of the time and mostly drinking alone. Well, apart from the people watching his live streams. Cobra had a PayPal account so that he could get donations from fans, which along with his merch sales, wand sales, tactical soap sales and government disability payments was his only real source of income. Now that his address was known, his trolls and fans would send him gifts straight to his door. These gifts would range from wand holsters to alcohol, but the main gifts that he got were food deliveries from DoorDash. These included such treats as pizza with no cheese, sauce or toppings, a calzone filled with pine nuts and Subway sandwiches with no meat but all the sauces. Look at this sloppy mess, YouTube. This is ridiculous. That's a lot of f***ing sauce, YouTube. Holy sh**. That is a saucy f***ing sandwich. Oh, that's a sloppy f sandwich. Holy sh**. I've made my views on trolling clear in some of my other videos. I'm not a big fan of it. That being said, the saucy Subway sandwiches got me pretty good. It's pretty funny. Oh, it's dripping all over the place. Stop. <laughs> God damn it. Man, I gotta get a plate. Son of a bitch. Ugh, f hard to boggle them. Josh takes the obvious head-on trolling like calling him names pretty well and doesn't really seem to care that much about it, but is confused by the more subtle trolling like the saucy Subway sandwiches. He doesn't really understand how free food could be a troll. You can see like the cogs in his brain turning, trying to understand it before he just thinks, yeah, I'm hungry and starts eating. These deliveries are very frequent. See what the fucking YouTube troll sent me today. Oh. Let's see what my fucking YouTube troll sent me on DoorDash. This ought to be hilarious. I guess it's supposed to. Oh my god, autistic freak out incoming. It's like, not really. <laughs> Of course they sent me a bra. <laughs> oh my god, wild bird food. <laughs> this is too goddamn funny. Uh, the vibrating bullets. Oh, behave. White mayo packet, honey salt packet, strawberry preserve, mustard packet, hot mustard sauce, butter packet, sugar packet, equal packet. SNS sauce, barbecue sauce, grape jam, happy meal, hamburger, one hamburger with extra mustard, extra salt, extra ketchup, <laughs> two mayonnaise, extra onions, no regular meat, plain, extra kids fry, milk, under three toy, creamer packet, and syrup, barbecue sauce, black olives, chicken, and pineapple. It's a pasta bowl. How do you like them apples? This time I got sent some gummy snacks. So that wasn't a, a troll package.
I got a free Subway and some free Taco Bell. Look at that. I'll add that to my food stash. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, this is too goddamn funny. You got to see what they sent me. Holy shit. They sent me some baby pacifiers because my trolls are overgrown toddlers for me to get a life. Y'all sent me some Taco John's. Oh, shit. Oh, look at that. Cobra's being a good sport about all this bullshit. And y'all sent me some Budweiser. Yeah. Suck it, trolls. You know, and that's really, that's really going to stick it to the trolls more than me not freaking out about this dumb shit on camera. And I'm over here laughing about it. See this right here? I don't even care if it's Bud Light or Budweiser Zero. Full flavor, zero alcohol brew. Oh, that's hilarious. Like, oh, I'm going to f*** Cobra. He likes alcohol, so I'm going to send him alcohol-free beer. That'll f***ing show him. <laughs> Look at this, YouTube. I want to thank my trolls for buying groceries for me, man. That's a lot of f***ing potatoes. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Christ, my trolls are f***ing sad. Holy shit. You would think after the first ten times of ordering stupid shit and sending it to me that they get the f***ing hints. It doesn't piss me off. It just makes me think my trolls are gluttons for being slayed. McDonald's, American cheese, mustard, salt, ketchup, pickles, mayonnaise, onion, shredded lettuce, no regular meat. <laughs> God damn, dude. A small french fries, aww. One of the big storylines from this new apartment was when Josh found a praying mantis. Josh is an animal lover, so he took the little creature in to care for it. He named it Mrs. Green, which is where the Mr. Green troll got his name from, I guess. Josh, not really understanding how to care for a praying mantis, gave it all the things that he loves, such as alcohol and nicotine. It died. Nicotine is an insecticide, and it has been the most widely used insecticide in the world since 1999. Josh then mounted the corpse onto one of his magical staffs and tried to sell it on Etsy for $666. The fact that him finding a praying mantis is one of the main storylines should tell you that nothing of note really happens in this new apartment. Pretty much every live stream is him getting drunk, talking about how he hates his trolls and then drinking some more, going on a drunken rant about gender relations, and sometimes he'll give his fans a little treat by getting drunk and doing an in-depth food review. Check out that. Out. Yeah, extra cheese, extra bacon, onions. Got a large stuffed crust pizza with extra cheese, extra bacon, onions, jalapenos, and anchovies, yes. So I got a large Papa John's pizza, stuffed crust, extra cheese, extra bacon, anchovies, large, large stuffed crust, extra cheese, extra bacon, Alfredo sauce. Got a stuffed crust extra large pizza. Got a large stuffed crust cheese pizza. Large stuffed crust pizza. Large stuffed crust pizza. Large stuffed crust. Large stuffed crust. From Papa John's. Large stuffed crust pizza with anchovies. Jalapenos, onions, extra bacon. Got a large stuffed crust pizza, the extra cheese, and the bake extra bacon, extra cheese, extra bacon, jalapenos, onions, anchovies, large stuffed crust, extra cheese, extra bacon, jalapenos, anchovies, onions. A large stuffed crust pizza with extra cheese. A large Alfredo sauce stuffed crust pizza. Large stuffed crust. P 
pizza. Large stuffed crust pizza with Alfredo sauce. Got a large stuffed crust, gonna have Alfredo sauce, bacon. Extra bacon, extra cheese, jalapenos, onions. This is what I would order from Papa John's again if I was ordering their pizza. Josh seems to have wrapped himself up in the culture war politics of the internet, something that's all too common these days, and also talks about something called the Forbidden Five, or six sometimes. He will drunkenly rant about this quite a lot. You don't f*** kids, you don't f*** dead bodies, you don't f*** your relatives, you don't f*** animals, and you say f*** in general. It's just the forbidden four to five, you know what I'm saying? Cobra, what's your ideal woman? Well, first of all, of age alive, cisgendered, consenting, non-related. I want to apologize for being born, not only because I'm white, not only because I'm straight, not only because I'm cisgendered, but because my existence sucks. So I would like to apologize for me being born. So join me and help with my birthday suck. King Cobra's life seems like it's tumbling downhill at the moment. The oddball friends he once had only show up on a rare occasion. He has given up on his dreams to be a musician. He rarely makes ones and he has given up on love. He just now drinks alone, talking about winning the lottery so that he can build his dream house and eats a lot of fast food. I'm gonna take a leak. Fuck yeah! Oh This is all I got left, YouTube. God damn it! Broke my fucking cigarette. Kids are more precious than rock and roll. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Never uh, bullshit. God damn it! I just want my fucking people to love my videos. His drinking has gotten so out of control that he has been barred from local bars. He was meant to go out for dinner with his family for his 31st birthday but got so drunk that his dad refused to go and in 2022 he was arrested for drunkenly threatening his father.
Recently, the only real thing of note for me at least is that Sam Hyde is trying to recruit him to be a guest in the fish tank house. Big A with the 10, thank you. Uh, Marty Burner with the 50. King Cobra JFS would make a great freeloader or contestant. God knows he needs the money. That is being worked on. Um, Johnny the Fan. He's very, um, he's the most diva ish to get. It's yeah. difficult to wrangle. Yeah. King Cobra JFS has been the most requested person I have had so far, but I've been putting off making the video as honestly I just don't get why he has such a large cult following or why people are so fascinated by him. I mean, over the last two years, one of the main things of note is that he found a praying mantis and drinks a lot. Nothing much happens in this story. I even put it to a vote and he was the winner, so here we are. You ask and you shall receive. I must admit that while doing the research for this video and getting lost in the Cobraverse, I still don't get it. He is for sure an eccentric character with a cast of eccentric friends and he has documented his life for over a decade so people feel like they know him, which I do get. The Realist Reality TV, the real world autistic Truman show with no script or producers creating situations. Well, in fact, the viewers are the producers and create a lot of the situations. I must admit that even after finishing the research of this video, I have been watching some of his live streams and they are pretty entertaining. Well, the clips channels really, the live streams are kind of hard to get through. If you are one of the people that find him intriguing, I'll put links in the descriptions to the best clips channels that I've found and I'll include his YouTube channel. Please don't harass him, he seems like a good guy. For me at least, the most interesting part of this story is the videotaped evidence of accelerated senescence. Our cells decaying until our inevitable death. Entropy will one day come for us all and we must all confront our ticking senescence. We will all grow old and decay over time, die then be reborn into a new form. Our culture will do the same and change into something new. Our countries, ideas, beliefs, our solar system will grow old. Our sun will consume the earth, explode and throw out the building blocks for new life into the universe. And ultimately, our universe will grow old and die. Who knows what happens after this, but it seems likely that this is just a stage in the cycle of rebirth that everything must go through. But you weren't expecting me to compare Josh Saunders to the death of the universe when you clicked on this video. King Cobra has had a brief life focused on tobacco and alcohol, which has unfortunately fast forwarded this process and serves as a stark reminder to us all that we are on a never ending march to old age. So maybe we should cherish each step in a journey before we rot and die. I'm available for children's parties. Not really sure where I'm going with this. I just like the word senescence and want people on the internet to think I'm smart. Joshua Saunders is 32 years old and it's honestly sad to see him go from a young man full of beans to an alcoholic who just sits around hating the world. The naive dreams of youth trapped in a bag, smashed against a wall and thrown into a canal by a cruel indifferent world. We all need something good to die for to make it beautiful to live. Josh seems to have picked alcohol, which in the emptiness of the modern world may be the best that he can hope for. From everything that I have seen at least, Josh seems like a good guy who like us all has made some mistakes over the years and I honestly hope that he shakes off this slump that he's going through at the moment as if it continues it's hard to see him lasting much longer. Let's hope that he sorts himself out and one day builds his dream house. I don't expect my family to kiss my ass. F*** that. I don't expect my family to be like, oh my god, it's the legendary King Cobra JFS, okay? all that but for them to be at least like oh hey he's getting views he's famous just acknowledge that i'm doing my thing and i'm doing it right and i get views because of it a big thanks to the channel members for giving me enough money to build my dream house watch this video about jason genova he actually has an interesting story and bye bye what makes this sandwich so sloppy is all the goddamn sauces.